Hello, calculus fans. OK, so we've done a little bit of work with computing derivatives of polynomial functions. And now we want to try to see about computing derivatives of exponential functions. So we're going to take a generic exponential function, f of x equals a to the x. We're going to talk about computing its derivative. And everything we do here will assume that a is bigger than 0. So as usual, we'll use the definition of the derivative. So f prime of x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. It's the same definition we've been using a lot. We're going to plug things into the exponential function. So now we get limit as h goes to 0 of a to the x plus h minus a to the x all over h. So let's do a little bit of algebraic manipulation now. Notice that the expression a to the x plus h, one of your laws of exponents says you can break it up like this so that it's a to the x times a to the h. And now we can factor out a to the x in the numerator. OK, now comes the key step in everything that we're doing here is what we're, what we're going to do is pull that a to the x outside of the limit. It looks like this. The reason we can do this is because this is a limit as h goes to 0. So as far as the limit goes, a to the x is just a number. And so we're just using a limit law to pull that multiplicative constant outside of the limit. Now, we don't really know whether or not this limit exists. So let's think about that for a moment. What I'd like to do is just plug in x equals 0. So on the left-hand side, it just turns into f prime is 0. And then on the right-hand side, this term turns into 1 because a to the 0 is just 1. And then we're just left with this limit. Now again, we don't know whether this limit exists, but we have proven something. So at this point, we've proven that if this limit exists, then the exponential function is differentiable everywhere, and we have a formula for its derivative. Its derivative will be f prime of x equals f prime of 0 times a to the x. And here, keeping in mind that f prime of 0 is just whatever the value of this limit is. Again, we don't know whether the limit exists. We're saying that if it does, then we have this nice formula for the derivative of the exponential function. Now, we're actually not in a position to prove this, but this limit does actually exist whenever a is bigger than 0. And so let's go ahead and try to estimate the value of this limit for various values of a. So if we go ahead and pick, let's say, a equals 2 and plug that in so that now the limit looks like this, and we go ahead and pick very small values of h, it won't be that hard to convince yourself that the limit really does exist because the values are going to get close to something. And it turns out that the limit is going to be eh, pretty close to 0.69, something like that. Now let's try it again for, let's try a equals 3. So if you were to plug small values of h into your calculator for this expression, you'd see you'd get something about 1.1. Really, I would suggest that you actually do this on your calculator to see that these values are about right. Now, none of this proves that the limits exist but it gives us some compelling evidence that we believe uh, that, it, it, that they could exist. Now, what we'd really like is a value of a for which the limit came out to exactly 1. If we had such a value of a, then the differentiation formula would look like this. It, you would see that the derivative of a to the x would be a to the x. Because then, this piece here, which is just this limit, would be exactly 1, and then you'd get this great looking differentiation formula. That's a pretty cool formula to say that you have a function whose derivative is equal to itself. Not many functions like that. Now when we calculated these limits, again this is something you should do on your calculator, when you plug in a 2 you get a limit that's about 0.69, when you plug in a 3 you get a number that is about 1.1. So it's reasonable to suggest that there is a value of a that's between 2 and 3 That'll do the job. That'll give us a limit of exactly 1. OK, so it turns out that the number that does this is about 2.71828. And this number, and it's just a number, it's so important in math that we actually give it a name. It gets its own letter. We're going to call it E. 
So from now on, when you run into E, it's just this number. It's exactly the number that will make this limit, this limit here, come out to 1. So let's write that down as our definition of E. So we're going to define the number E to be the number that makes this limit come out to be exactly 1. Now again, we don't have any proof that this limit exists or that any such number exists. So we're going to take that on faith right now. Now we have a way of drawing this with a picture. Let's take a look at what the picture looks like. So it turns out that the graph of y equals e to the x is exactly the right exponential function so that the tangent line, the one that you see there in red, has slope 1. If you were to pick a different base for the exponential, like 2 to the x, or 3 to the x, or 10 to the x, you will not get a slope of exactly 1 at that point. So we're going to say that this function, f of x equals e to the x, is the natural exponential function. So the base e, which again, e is just a number, it's about 2.7, that's called the natural base. And it's natural because it makes a nice differentiation formula. So when you use e as the base of your exponential, then the derivative of e to the x will just be e to the x. So you may have actually encountered e somewhere in algebra or pre-calculus, and at the time they just tell you, well, this is a natural base, but they're not really able to tell you why. And so the why is this, that we want to have a nice differentiation formula. So this isn't really something that they could introduce very well in a algebra or pre-calculus class. So we're really giving the answer now what makes it a natural base. Okay, so that's it. We talked about E, and this is one of the most important numbers in all of mathematics. That's all for now.